Okay, everybody, welcome back. So now let's actually do an example with the diesel cycle. So we have an air standard diesel cycle, has a compression ratio of 18.2, air enters at 120 degrees Fahrenheit and 14.7 psi absolute at the beginning of the compression process, and then there is it's at 3,150 ranking at the end of the heat addition process. Okay. Now I hate when they do this where you have two sets of units right here in the entrance. So let's go ahead and convert Fahrenheit to Rankine. So that'll be 580 Rankine. We're just going to add 460 to it. Is that perfectly accurate? No, but we're rounding a little bit. It's okay to do. We're going to use constant specific heats at room temperature to calculate things, which means no tables whatsoever. And just because of how the problem statements are set up, it says use tables to calculate. Do we need tables? We actually don't need tables because it's constant specific heats. Now, if it didn't give it to us, we would have to use the tables to get our, our specific heat for constant pressure, constant volume, and our ratios, but that's given in the problem statement, so we didn't actually have to go to the tables at all this time. Okay, what are we finding? The cutoff ratio and the thermal efficiency. We'll start with the cutoff ratio because that's going to be the easiest one to get. Now, if you're going to do any of these problems, the first thing is always to draw the process. Remember, for an auto cycle, we had a heat addition process that was constant volume. In this case, it's constant pressure because the piston is allowed to expand as the gas combusts and adds the heat. So if we're gonna find everything, what we're gonna to need to do is figure out what is first the volume at two and the volume at three. Volume at two we can do fairly simply because it's isentropic compression and therefore we can use our isentropic relations. Okay, we can use our isentropic relations. And also, I'm just being silly here. We already know the volume at two because it's a compression ratio of 18.2. Yeah, we don't actually know the volume, you're correct. We only know the ratio of volumes, but that will be enough for us later on. Okay, but what's the temperature at two? Well, the temperature at point two is gonna be using our isotropic relations. We're gonna plug it in here. We know what this ratio is, even if we don't know the exact values because that's a compression ratio. And so we plug it in, we get that the temperature right here at 2 is 1,851 rank key. Now, this is already enough to calculate our cutoff ratio. Now, how do we do that? Well, we just need to find V3, or specifically what the ratio of V3 over V2 is. We don't need to know any of the exact values. We just need a ratio. So let's see if we can calculate that ratio. Now, we can do that because we can treat this step as an ideal gas. So when that heat's added, these two are going to be equal to each other. Also, because this is constant pressure, we've got that nice flat line right there. Those two cancel out because they're the same. And so since we already know what our temperatures are, we now see that our temperatures, the ratio of our temperature from two to three, is the same as our ratio of our volume, or sorry, our specific volume from two to three, which gives me a cutoff ratio of 1.702. Now I want to go ahead and tell you something, that the problem is already done. Like getting your thermal efficiency is actually really, really simple at this point. Why? Because I gave you an equation for thermal efficiency that was a function of cutoff ratio and compression ratio. Like you could just go back to it. Back a couple slides, right here, this guy. So this is the thermal efficiency for the diesel cycle. And what you can see is I have compression ratio right here. I have cutoff ratio right here. If I plug in the values we have, so this guy is 18.2, this guy right here is going to be 1.7, same here, 1.7. That comes out to be 65.8%. We're done. Just plug it in the equation. Nice, right? Okay, so that was a super easy way of doing this problem, and I strongly suggest that you do it that way. I mean, when you ask for it. Okay, let's get going. Go on. There we go. I haven't jumped for a lot. There we are. Here we are. But we're going to do it a different way, too. We're going to do it using our basic thing, which was thermal efficiency is equal to, make sure I do this right, 1 minus Q out over Q in. Because remember, the heat in is always different than the heat out. And so we want to figure out what this ratio is. How do we do that? Well, we have to find the temperature at every single point. We have to find the temperature at 4 as well. So let's go ahead and keep on doing that. We're going to see if the numbers come out to be the same. Remember 65.8, that was the number from earlier. Okay, now let's determine the heat input because that's part of our thermal efficiency equation. 
How do we do that? Well, it said constant specific heats. So when we're trying to figure out the difference in our enthalpies, we just have to do um, our specific heat at constant pressure because it is constant pressure line. That's what we see right there. And we have our difference in temperatures. Plug it in. We always have absolute, always absolute right here. And we get 311.76 BTUs per pound mass. As a note, I hate BTUs, but we have to use them anyway. Okay, so we've got one half of it. Now we're going to have to figure out Q out. And to get Q out, we're going to have to know what the temperature is at our last point, T4. So now let's figure out what the temperature is after isentropic expansion. Well, luckily for us, we had an equation for isentropic expansion. So isentropic compression, and it's the same exact one for isentropic expansion. But what is this ratio right here? Do we know that ratio? It might surprise you that I say it's V2 over V4. How, where did that come from? Well, let me show you. So we know, let's make sure I do this right here. As a note, that should have been 0, 2. A little typo there. But what we know is that my cutoff ratio, RC, is equal to 1.702. And that is equal to V3 over V2. Okay? V3 over V2. I also know that my compression ratio, which is equal to 18.2, is equal to V2 over V1. So I've got a few ratios here. The last thing is let's draw our diagram again. We can't see it here. I'm going to draw it for you. This last step from 4 to 1 is constant volume. Volume is equal to constant, which tells me that V1 is equal to V4. So I use all those things to get together. So first off, I'm just going to deal with this guy right here. I know that V3 over V2 is equal to 1.702. I can rearrange that and say, okay, well, V3 is equal to 1.702 V2. And so that goes into the equation. Okay, so let's write it out again. So V3 over V4 is equal to 1.702 V2 over V4. The second thing I said was that, okay, um, V4 is equal to V1, so let's change that 4 to a 1. And V2 over V1 is equal to, whoop, sorry about that, V1 over V2 is equal to 18.2. So those turn to 18.2. And you see that suddenly all my specific volumes are gone, and I've gotten this in terms of my compression ratio and my cutoff ratio. So that's where that happened. Now if we do that, okay, we got everything here. We get our temperature as 1,220.8 Rankine. And this will now let us find out what the heat output of our system is, the heat rejection of our system. And that's going to be simply T4 minus T1. Second thing to notice here is I'm using um, specific heat at constant volume because the first process was constant pressure. The last process is constant volume. Okay, So we have to use CV there. Plug it in and I get 109.6 BTUs per pound mass. Okay, so I've gone all the way around now. I have my heat input, I have my heat rejection. I can plug it into my basic thermal efficiency equation and I get 64.85%. I think I said 65.8 earlier. That's just because I cannot read my notes. Sorry, buddy. I got the exact same number. So guess what? Just using the equation, we could have skipped like seven, five steps already. So my advice to you is use the equation, seriously. I give them to you for a reason. They can sometimes make things really, really simple. Save yourself some pain and suffering. Okay, but that's it for this time. We've seen two different ways to solve this problem. Hopefully it helps you, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.